Let's say we have some gnomes. Say we know, well, actually, let's describe the picture first. We have a spring in a tube, and we use a sphere to compress that spring by a certain distance. We'll call that distance x. That spring is going to work, that, that sphere is going to move forward off the spring and is going to go to the end of the tube where it will suddenly grab hold of a string and then it will rotate around in a circle. That's right, I wrote this problem. <laughs> Let's say we have some gnomes. First off, we know the mass of the object. We know the spring constant. We know how much it's compressed and we know the length. What we're trying to find is the velocity at the top. So again, we know mass, spring constant, how much it's compressed, and the length of the string. We're simply trying to figure out the velocity at the very top. Is this a frictionless too? And there is no friction. Thank you for pointing that out. Absolutely no friction. Good. First off, we know we can use conservation of energy. Why, Yuchin, can we use conservation of energy in this particular case? No friction, no force applied. Therefore, we know <coughs> mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final. Great. Our initial position we'll put right here. Our final position we'll put up at the top. Yes, Meg? Well, when the spring pushing the ball is being considered a force applied? It's not a force applied, it's a force of the spring, and we have an equation for um, the energy stored in a spring. What sort of energy does the object to start with, mechanical energy initially. Uh, Victoria, give me one. Initially, it's right here. It's compressing the spring, and it's going to eventually move forward. So what type of energy does it start with? What kind of potential energy? Help her out, Bill. This elastic potential energy, the energy stored in a spring. So we have one half kx initial squared. Okay, what else, Gary? Should we set a zero line? Ah, I think that is a great idea. Where should we set our zero line? Like right under the. Actually, I would suggest maybe at the center of mass of the sphere here. We'll set the zero line there. By setting the zero line there, Rohan, what happens? Sadness. Sadness I have for all of you. Henry. Um, at the initial point, the uh, ball lacks gravitational potential. It has no gravitational potential energy because the initial height is zero. It's at the zero line. What about kinetic energy, the other type of energy? De Silva. Um, it hasn't started moving yet, so it's zero. Initial velocity is zero, so it has no uh, kinetic energy to begin with. Mechanical energy final. What does it end with? Stays. Okay. M G H final. What else? Stays. Kinetic energy. What about the um, uh, yeah elastic potential energy? It's no longer being acted upon by the spring. Great. It's no longer being acted upon by the spring, so that is not going to be a part of it. We're looking for uh, velocity final, let's just plug in some stuff. One half k x, x initial is just defined as x, so that's x squared. M G H, what is H final, Nick? Two, two actually two L, oh, this is a L the distance. Uh, and plus one half times the mass times the velocity final squared. The velocity final is what we're looking for. Uh, let's multiply by two, we get k x squared equals four m g l plus m v final squared. What did everyone bring to the party? I know, it's sad. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. So we get k x squared minus four m g l equals mass times velocity final squared. Therefore, the velocity final is equal to kx squared minus 4mgl over m of the square root of. Now, 
when you take the AP test, you will get answers that will look like this. This is our answer, okay? Now, one thing that I suggest is that you take a moment and see if your answer makes sense. So let me walk through this. For example, does it make sense that the velocity final will increase the more we compress the spring? Yes. It will increase the larger the spring comes. Okay. Does it make sense that the velocity final, uh, I guess that's about it. We have four M. It's hard to say what's going to happen with the M because we have the mass at the top and the bottom, and we have a negative there. So that's about all you can say with this one. So there's, it's, it's kind of, when you get these answers like this, it doesn't quite sit as comfortably as when you get a number. But I like it. Part B. <laughs> what is the minimum we need to compress the spring such that the sphere barely makes it to the top and therefore will continue to make a circle. So what is the minimum compression such that it barely makes it over the top? <coughs> Do we assume the velocity final is zero? One of the things you need to be aware of is that the velocity final cannot be zero. Although it's a common misconception, the velocity at the very top will not be equal to zero. It's something we need to figure out. Now, I suggest we start with a free body diagram. Let's take the object when it's up here, and let's draw, let's, let's draw the object when it's located up here, it's gone all the way up to the top. What is the, what is, what's a force in our free body diagram? Uh, it's a D. Uh, force of gravity down. Force of gravity down. What else? Tip. Tension. tension in the rope, which is also down. But. Wouldn't tension be zero in this case though? Because. Well, because it's not like it's not depending on the string to keep it. It's just it's barely. Because at this particular moment, notice when it barely makes it to the top, that's when the tension is equal to zero. I'm going to leave it in the free body diagram. We'll sum the forces and we'll can cancel out the tension. But realize it's at that particular point where the tension equals zero. So now we are going to we've drawn our free body diagram. To Silva, did you see that we drew our free body diagram? Yeah. yeah. Good. After we draw our free body diagram to Silva, what are we going to do next? Uh, sum the forces. We're going to sum the forces. Emily, are you ready? In what direction are we going to sum the forces in? How do you know that? Because it's moving in a circle. So sum the forces in the in direction. Looking at our free body diagram, please sum the forces in the in direction, Michael. Force of gravity. So is the force of gravity positive or negative? Uh, it's positive. No, negative. Why is it negative? Because it's going down. Because it's going down. How many people agree with that? It's negative because it's going down? Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. It is. So, uh, John, help me. Positive. Because? Remember, when you're summing the forces in the in direction, it's not down, it's not up, it's not left, it's right. You're always thinking in versus out. Okay? It is inward, therefore the force of gravity is positive. I'll leave the tension in there for a moment. We'll cancel it out in just a moment. Uh, the net force in the in direction is equal to what? Um, uh, Mavich? Net force in the in direction. Uh, Good, the tension is equal to zero. Force of gravity is m times g. This is equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration. What is the centripetal acceleration to in this particular case? Spets Uh, I'm going to put R for now. I agree we'll, we'll replace it with L in just a moment. Sierra? Everyone brought mass to the party. Everyone brought mass to the party. Isn't that exciting? Here we go. Wait, wait. Everyone brought mass to the party. Everyone brought mass to the party. We can take mass from everyone to get them. The tangent velocity is equal to R times G the square root of R. At this point, we're almost done. We can come back to here. 
We then have the tangential velocity is equal to the square root of r times g, which is also equal to kx squared minus 4mgl all over m, the square root of. We get mrg after we square both sides is equal to kx squared minus 4mgl. I suppose we should point out that r is equal to l, so this is l. Here, let's do this. Uh, mvt squared over L, therefore this is L. Therefore we get 5mlg equals kx squared, therefore x is equal to 5mlg over k, the square root of L.